All right, live from New York, it's the world's largest show and tell. That's right, now twice larger. It's a full hour long of show and tell, the worldwide biggest, greatest maker gathering today at 7 right. p.m. Eastern time. That's right, we will be doing this every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. indefinitely, every single week. We may never stop doing this. We used to just do it 7.30, and it was uh, something we did for the last decade. For all the new people just joining us, this is Adafruit Industries. This is our factory. It's um, quiet. Adafruit is shut down because of COVID-19. All of our team members are getting paid. All of our employees are getting paid. All of our remote contractors are getting paid. And they're at home now. They're all, li they're all, they're all leaving. Um, we will be working with our partners like DigiKey to continue to get products to everyone out there. But thank you so much, uh, everyone, not only for the new folks that are joining us now, but for helping us make a sturdy, stable company that will get through this together. So we have a, a fun, action-packed, hour-long show and tell. And then. Yeah, and then we have Ask an Engineer at two hours. 8 p.m. So we're going to keep everybody busy. Um, there's plenty of time to watch the news, um, but this is for sure a distraction from what's going on. We want that to be clear. Um, we're going to have some friends of the company come on. We're going to debut the latest issue of Hackspace. We're going to talk to Kevin from DigiKey. We're going to have our entire team. And we're going to do this 24-7 on Discord. If you haven't already, go to adafruit.it slash discord or discord.gg slash adafruit. And it is a 24-7 online hacker space. We have 17,000 people there. It's probably going to be even more soon because everyone wants to find a way to connect together. So let's kick it off with Kevin from DigiKey. Hey, Kevin from DigiKey. Hey, Kevin, what you doing? I am just hanging out at DigiKey. We are still open. Uh, we have no plans to close anything. Of course, it's kind of like a ghost town in the building. Uh, DigiKey is being extremely flexible with employees and just trying to make the best out of this. It, it's a crazy time, but it can also be a very exciting time because, yep. as, as you guys know, innovation doesn't stop, right? That's right. And uh, folks can get Adafruit stuff from DigiKey, and we'll have more stuff for DigiKey to sell directly as the months go by as well. Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting time for us at DigiKey you know, to continually work with Adafruit. So we're all very excited here. And if anybody needs anything, like I said, we're not planning on shutting down. We have companies that rely on our technology for innovation, whether it's just you hackers at home or the medical companies. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are you working on either at home or at work right now? So I am still at work. This is my office. It's not your living room? <laughs> looks like, this actually looks like my living room. Yeah. I, I, I wish this was uh, in my house, but I, I do plan on working from home in the very near future. But for right now, this is my office. This is where all the fun happens. And uh, the last couple of days, I was trying to retrofit my superhero helmet here with some Adafruit parts. I actually have it connected with uh, Feather Bluefruit NRF 52840 and the Cricut. So use the Bluefruit app. Let's get it connected here. And I, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I can open it. Oh, nice. And then you can, you know, these buttons will change the colors on the outside. And I plan on taking this a step further, and we're going to do some AR things around it for uh, some of the, the cool things we do at shows for when shows do start happening again. That's right. All right. Well, I like what's, what's neat about this because Bluetooth, you can be six feet away and control it. <laughs> That's right. so stay, stay safe. Yeah, ex <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he doesn't cough on me very often, so it is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. watch out though, he's, he's nuclear powered. All right, let's put some cool stuff. Right. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. And please thank everyone at DigiKey, um, Adafruit community and everyone watching this. Uh, make an account on DigiKey because that's where you're gonna have to get Adafruit stuff for a while, um, at least for now. So thank you everyone out there and all the people that are shipping and all the people that are keeping all of DigiKey's operations going. Um, it's one of the things that's allowing us to close Adafruit down, but still be a company that can ship hardware to people in some way. Yes, and definitely thank you, Adafruit, and the entire Adafruit community. You guys are amazing. You've helped DigiKey out a lot, and we're here for you. Our tech support's here for you. Our sales are here for you. And anything you need, we're going to get through this whole situation together and hopefully have a lot of innovative fun around it. That's right. All right. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. What about Minnesota? They are Minnesota nice. It's we true. are. Northern Minnesota. I used to live there. Okay. Next up. Next up, Ben. Hey, Ben. 
Hello. Hackspace. How's it going? So Ben, Hi. you're the editor in chief of Hackspace magazine. It's a downloadable publication. So people who might have some time. It's a PDF. You can download it and read it in the safety of your home. And you yeah. also can subscribe in the US. They'll deliver it to you in the mail, which Yay. is how all of us are getting goods and services right now. So yeah. Ben, I have the preview. You sent it to me. Thank you so much. Um, what's in the Hackspace magazine that people will be able to get soon in some way? Yeah, so this will be online from tomorrow morning. Uh, you can download it from Hackspace, uh, hsmag.cc. Um, so obviously a cover feature this <clears throat> this month is all about making stuff with wood. Um, but yeah, we do loads of other stuff as well. Um, so yeah, if you just have a look through, the first section is top projects, which I guess is a bit like show and tell, yeah. uh, which is where we... Uh, we pick up a few, if you just keep scrolling a little yeah, bit. The we'll orange to... crab. There, this is a pro cool photo. So this is a project that had some of our stuff in it. And I was like, I want to know more about it. Now I can, I'm going to read this PDF tonight. Yeah, that's Martin Mander. He does awesome stuff. Um, yeah. And then this, this is, is the watch. wearable watch. The computer bugs. These are beautiful. Look at this. Yeah, look at these nice. Yeah, absolutely stunning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, some paperwork there. Yeah, this phone went all over the internet. And um, we were happy to tell everyone, like, yeah, that's our phone. We're the only USA manufacturer of cell phones. A rotary cell phones. Yeah, <laughs> rotary cell phones. Yeah. So, okay, this cool guitar. Yeah. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. This 3D, uh, this plane made out of folded paper. Um, yeah, wow. And, uh, yeah, the guy's been working on it for years, and he's still got quite a bit. He's got no wings yet. He's still building it. But it's, yeah, it's absolutely yeah. amazing. Got the uh, circuit python in here. Yeah, this crab. is the orange crab. Um, the, the feather format really took off, and we're watching an entire ecosystem of makers able to make their own businesses. This is a beautiful photo, and this is another one I wanted to know, like, you know, Greg's story, and this is, here it is. Cool. Yes, yeah, so that's an FPGA board, yeah, as you say, in feather format. That's uh, It's just launched uh, uh, end of last week, I think it was. Yeah. All right, maker spaces, and then... Yeah. You got all the woodworking stuff. You know what? It's a good time to start doing stuff with wood. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, it's it's always a good time to start doing stuff with wood. But it's something that I've always been really interested in, but not that. It's not a skill I've ever really developed, but it's it's been great to, uh, yeah. to have to put this together. Because it's, it's one of those things that can go with everything, right? Even if you're interested in electronics, it's really useful to be able to sort of build your enclosures and sort of props yeah. and things. I love so, the wooden electronics projects, you know, when they have like a clock and there's like a wooden case and then the electronics, it has such a, especially if they stain the wood and they do like some, a really nice job with it. It can be, it can really enhance the electronics by, by giving it that contrast. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The sort of modern and old look yeah. is, yeah, it's beautiful. And for the folks that are in the U S uh, Hackspace is now launched in the U S there's a special deal. So folks could, uh, if they want to start this up, they should do that now. Yeah, absolutely. It, well, only we're only running the special offer for the next two weeks. It ends at the end of May. Um, okay. So for the next two weeks, you can get 12 issues for $60, um, and that's including delivery, and it's also including a Circuit Playground Express. So you've got some, uh, something to play right. with as well while you're reading. All right. Um, got an article with Circuit Python, it looks like. This is another super packed. I don't know how you do this every month. I said that last time we talked about it. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a bit of work. Uh, we're a bit fortunate. This month we're working on now is a five week issue because some are four weeks, some are five weeks, just because yeah. the way the months fall. So it's a bit of a relaxing one this uh, this month. And one of the things too, you know, I worked. I've been an editor, editor in chief of things, and it's neat that you're actually doing projects too. I I think that because you do projects and you're on a deadline, you have a lot of empathy for the other authors, and I like that you've had this um, skill building with Circuit Python. So thanks for. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, definitely. It's, I think for me personally, it's just really important to stay connected with that side of it. You know, be, and I know in some magazines you just have to because of the workload, but you, you sort of almost uh, become removed from the thing that your magazine's about. Yeah. So yeah, for me, I really like to get stuck in and sort of try out different skills and sort of this is great. develop myself as a maker as well. Yeah. And I, you know, the disclosure is Adafruit has nothing to do with Hackspace. We really just want to see this magazine and all the maker style magazines and all the hacker style magazines succeed. If you're a magazine publication and, uh, and you want to come on the show until next week, or even this week, I got a full hour, uh, come, on, come on by. But um, Hackspace has been fantastic for the community. And I know there's probably going to be a lot of authors um, that want to get their projects out there because they're going to have some time. So if someone has a cool project, how do they get a hold of you if they want to see their work in Hackspace? Yes. Magazine? 
Uh, so just drop us an email. It's hackspace at raspberrypi.org. Um, I mean, we're part of Raspberry Pi. We don't, as you can see, we don't just focus on Raspberry Pi projects, but we're under that umbrella. So yeah, hackspace at raspberrypi.org or check out our website, uh, hsmag.cc slash uh, just hsmag.cc. Next month is all Arduino. information on there. Next month is Arduino. Great. Yeah, yeah. This is cool. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Ben, thank you so much. Um, we will see you at any show and tell that you want to do. Will you come back next month to show the next one? Absolutely, yeah. Yay! Awesome. Yeah. Okay, disclosure. Well, I do have that on my calendar. We are going to do that. So okay. <laughs> that was already kind of set up. So, it's okay. You can cool. do yeah. stuff to the audience. So you yeah. should get excited. Okay. Thank you so much, man. All right. Thanks, man. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Right. Next up, we're going to get some of our Adafruit team here. JP. JP, kick it off. How are you doing? Hey. Nice to see everybody. That was incredible. I love Hackspace, and that issue seemed like it was 14,000 pages long. It just yeah. never. <laughs> my, my, it's larger than the sun. Um, I sprained my scrolling finger. I'm sorry for that. Uh, right. So I won't take too much time, but I wanted to talk about uh, sort of an enhancement to a project I'm working on. This is our Clue and Bonsai Buckaroo-based uh, gardener project. So I've added some uh, graphics and uh, uh, sound, as well as we already had the text on this project, which measures the uh, resistance of your soil so that it can then drive a pump. I don't have it plugged in right here, uh, right now, but this is uh, a little DC motor pump. Uh, it goes in some water and when the uh, soil registers as dry, it will uh, beep at us and tell us that it's watering it. And it'll just keep doing that, it'll pump in water. It usually takes, uh, if it's very dry, just like four or five shots of water in, in the soil in these little um, flower pots I'm using is uh, back up to snuff. And then if you go to my, um, screen share, you can get a little closer uh, view of a, I'm actually recycling a robot. So this is a uh, 3D printed uh, water. I've done these kinds of projects before. This is a water uh, watering, a plant watering robot that I've done a few years ago uh, for a book on 3D printing. And I have all of those files uh, and images and stuff ready to go that I'm going to put into an Adafruit guide. So it's a bonus where we'll have our little clue and our uh, bonsai plugged in here. I've got uh, water in a, in a cup underneath, and there's a tube that's uh, connected to the pump. And so when these two nails in the soil register as dry, it's going to uh, go ahead and pump a couple squirts of water in there, and then our little flower will be happy again. Um, so, and, and it's kind of funny, I was pulling out the old guts. You can see pretty much everything I have there is, is this little clue and a battery and this teeny little pump, and that's about it. Here's what used to go in it. Um, so okay, I'll we'll put switch, it in front we'll of this camera. Oh, yeah. 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 So this was a uh, Arduino Uno and a uh, screw shield and a big old Adafruit um, motor shield version two, I think, as well as this nice big uh, gear motor, which would turn and it would flip a little um, watering pot here. So it was kind of intentionally not using a pump to be sort of anachronistic and, and funny in there. Uh, but I, I kind of like the upgrade for its uh, space savings, and I don't have a bunch of things to plug in anymore. So that's you that's, can recycle those parts now. Yeah, that's right. Can recycle those and right. get another and thing. Also, just to recap, because I want to maybe do um, like a little globe graphic at some point. So the first person we had was Kevin, Minnesota. Second person we had Ben, UK. JP, where in the world are you? I'm in Los Angeles, Southern California. Okay. You're in California. All right. So um, tomorrow you can do your show. Yeah, tomorrow I've got my show and uh, I've got a uh, pretty cool timely project that I'm working on that was actually a suggestion from my daughter having to do with a hand washing timer. So I have a couple of variations on hand washing timers that I'm gonna start uh, working on on the show and I'll be putting out a guide and we'll have a, a clue based version and a Circuit Playground Express based version for people that'll uh, require very few parts um, and uh, fairly simple coding, one in make code, one in uh, circuit Python, and uh, we've been talking about using different types of activation that don't require you to touch the thing, so that we can uh, stay clean uh, and uh, uh, wash our hands for the right. prescribed the, amount. Hygiene number one. The, <laughs> the pages of history have not been written about this current generation and what's going on, but I know for sure our hands will be clean. We will have very clean and We're very dry, it. honestly, hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Jeffy. See you all on the show tomorrow. Yep. Thanks, JP. Okay, right, next, next up. up. Hey, Katni. Hey, Katni. 
Oh, wait. wait. No, Kathy oh. moved over a slot. So oh, we're gonna, JP. Yeah, JP went away. Okay, Noah and Pedro, first up, where in the world are you? And what you doing? Hey, how's everybody doing? We are in South Florida. Can you hear us okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I show my elbow? Where's my elbow? Yeah. Right. You want me to right. add your secondary screen yet? Sure. Yes. Yeah, that'll be helpful. So this week is the MX MIDI guitar running yeah. through the Python. There we go. Here we go. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I needed that. <laughs> yeah, you're rocking out, dude. <laughs> All right, sweet. All right, so what, what's going on in there? What's in it? Yeah, so in here is the uh, Grand Central M4. It's running CircuitPython code by Liz. She's, I think, also in the in the stream, so you might hear some awesome sounds from her as well. Um, uh, lots of uh, Cherry MX switches, or what's in the neck here of the guitar. We have a strumming as well, so we can do chords. Uh, the whammy bar, as you heard. It's also got an accelerometer, so you can do some modulation things. Um, lots of different features, but check out the uh, Learn Guide that just went out today. And uh, that's it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Walk down to South Florida. This is, this is the anthem. OK. Hey, guys. And will you be doing your show next week? Absolutely. Yeah. Week, yes. All right. Are you, um, layer are by Layer is also coming out for some of the CAD techniques I went into building this. Got it. And what time are you going to be doing your show and what day? Uh, 11 p.m. Uh, 11 a.m. every Wednesday. Okay. So 11 a.m. next week. Yes. All right. We'll All right. Stick you. around because we'll need you to play us out at the end. Yeah. Maybe yeah. stick around. We'll see. Or you can you know, pop out and come back in. We still have another 45 minutes of show and tell. This feels right. I'm glad we did this. Yeah. This is a good idea. Okay. No, you came up with it. I, I just work here. Okay. okay. Let's do this. All right. All right. Do you want to go back to Kenny? Yeah. We're going to Sorry, Kenny. Like GP just, he slipped out of us. They're sneaky. That's all right. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kenny. How you doing? Right. And where are you? I am in Ottawa, Canada. So spreading out your map there. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing well. I still have had sitting on my desk since we took down the Christmas tree, the star that was on top of it, which of course is not going to focus, which I planned on. Being yeah, that's good. good. Ooh, glowy. It's made of uh, five NeoPixel sticks and a NeoPixel jewel, all wired in series. Um, and it's running off of a uh, Feather NRF 52840 and a NeoPixel 8, but not the one for the Feather M4. Um, it turns out you could use just the pins as level shifted pins um, and not get any of the fancy stuff that came with the NeoPixel 8, but it meant a really compact setup um, to run NeoPixels off of a Feather without needing to solder a level shifter together. Yeah. So it's running a bunch of different animations. Um, the same as the tree was, but much smaller. I hacked apart the code right before we started show and tell just to get it to run on the star. Um, cause otherwise it expected there to be a whole tree below it. And there was not, this is a 3d printed star that we found on Thingiverse. Um, we just looked for something that was hollow and I got my first introduction to 3d printed support material, which was awful. Um, it took hours to tear it all out of there, but it turned out really well. So the LED animation library is, is uh, already available. There is still some updated uh, code to actually run all the animations that are running on this right now um, that hasn't been published, uh, but it's on our list to get to um, after we clean everything up and get it running. And uh, I'm just excited that it didn't go into safe mode this whole time. Ooh, that's a nice animation. I'm expecting this to go across the screen and say, the more you know, or something like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Wash your hands, the more you know. Like, this is every public service now is right now. So yeah, so that's that's just been hanging out of my desk since Christmas and figured I would show it off since when we um, showed off the tree. I don't think we had the star ready at the time. So I think, that, that, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't cool. visible. All right, well, All right, good work, you're Annie. a star. That's what you are. Superstar. Superstar. All right. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. Yep. Okay, next okay. up, Ann, hey, Ann, how are you, Hi. and where are you? I'm in Northern Virginia near Washington, D.C. Okay. And uh, Secret Agent Ann. What do you have that you're going to show this week? Well, uh, I previewed just a hair of it uh, last week after uh, the wearable purse. And uh, what I've been doing is, let's see if I focus on the right board. Yes. So we have our ubiquitous 
uh, Adafruit Cricket robotics platform. It's it's made for you can have different microcontrollers, and this particular one is normally used with the microbit. And uh, uh, since the new Clue board is compatible with microbit, uh, I, we can just plug it into the the socket, and uh, I can program it in Circuit Python. So. Um, I've developed a, a quick program to cycle through um, various things. I just made the uh, servo over here turn off and then uh, let's see NeoPixels, I can turn them on and off. I'm working on some debouncing of the uh, switches right now. Um, so this will be published uh, in the next day or so. Um, uh, on learn.adafruit.com, so you can uh, grab yours and build your own. And uh, again, you don't have to use a clue if you've got the cricket with uh, something like uh, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit or Circuit Playground Express. Um, you can do some great projects very quickly um, using robotics with microcontrollers. So that's what I've been up to. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Anne. Thanks, Anne. All right. Next up. Uh, Next up, we're going to go to Dan. Hey, Dan. Dan. Hey, Hello. Hi, Where everybody. Are Where are you from? Where are you so, at? I'm in uh, Massachusetts near Boston. Um, this is uh, near Lemoore's, Lemoore's hometown. And what we've got going here is we've been, now that we have uh, Bluetooth Lower Energy on Circuit Python, we've got a lot of. Um, You've been connected to the various third-party devices, and now we're doing thermometers. So there are these really inexpensive thermometers you can buy uh, on Amazon or elsewhere that are like one probe or two probes or four probes. People typically use them for barbecues. So I've got a two-probe one here, and it's talking, it's sending the temperature via uh, Bluetooth Low Energy to my Feather NRF 52A40 here, and then that. I could just have that display the temperature, but instead what I'm doing is I'm sending the temperature data via a, an airlift feather wing to adafruit.io. And let me switch screens here and pick a different window. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to see. Okay. All right. Have oh, you got yeah. that one? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh. All right. So now we've got a, this is showing the temperature of all those probes and Though it's on my computer, it could be across the room or in a different part of the house, like if you want to monitor your barbecuing or monitor your smoker or whatever. Or if you want to be across the country, you could look at the barbecue or smoker. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll stick um, the temperature. It's updating temperature about every five seconds or so. So you should see temperature two go up. I just stuck it in that delicious cup of hot water that I had mm, showing you before. Delicious. There we go. OK. <laughs> cool. And just so out. everyone knows, we have Adafruit IO. It's a free service for everyone. And then there's the Adafruit uh, Plus edition, and it's about ten bucks a month. Um, because we're not shipping products, if anyone wants to help support Adafruit, sign up. I think we're almost up to our one thousandth uh, subscriber for it. So um, you know, that'll help us. But you could do all this without having a paid account. We're uh, playing nice with every device. I like I'm the using free account here. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. I'm, I'm using a free account here. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. I like the hacking. Like, so what Dan and I did is we actually went to Amazon. We just found what is the least expensive probe thermometer because it's like, you know, we don't manufacture like the stainless steel th probe thermometers, but yeah. we can, you know, you can have the low cost thing that can get damaged, obviously, because it's near hot temperatures and then wirelessly transmit it and then, you know, manipulate the data, have a display. So yeah, Barbie clue is coming up. Yeah, you're going to see a project with all this with all this new hardware and software. All right. So, all right. Thank Very you exciting. so much, Dan. You're welcome. All right. Take the screen off there. All right. Next Thanks, up, Dan. we're going to go to Brian. Brian, what you got going on? Oh my God, there's Baby Yoda. What? All right. But so we you, can't hear you. We can't hear you right now, but I was. That's why. Sorry. But words don't, didn't matter. But now you're back. Now I'm back because you know Baby Yoda. Yeah. All okay. right. So. I have been working on the DS1841. It is a um, temperature compensated um, ITC controlled 
um, resistor. It's pretty sweet. So right now I have it hooked up to in a voltage divider and it's uh, measuring the voltage on an analog pin. It's just uh, ramping up and then dropping back down to zero. And this is also on a log scale. So you can see it's got that nice log shape to it, um, which is pretty useful for like audio applications and stuff like that. Another cool thing about this one is that it can be used with a lookup table. So you can have a whole bunch of preset values that you can select from, which is kind of cool. Not what it's meant to be used for, but I think we can hack something together to get some cool applications going. Yeah, I like this because we have an I2C linear pot, but I, you know, I was, I've seen people use them in synthesizers and stuff, and I was like, oh, you know, if you're using it in the synth or in some like feedback system, you might want a log pot. And so this one, you know, it's designed for like DC DC converters, but it'll do the job. For sure. Yeah, totally. Sweet. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. And baby Yoda. Uh, and and you're um, where in the world are you? I, I am in the hinterland of San Francisco, otherwise known as Concord. Okay. Thank you so much, Brian. All right. Thanks, Brian. And baby Yoda. Okay. <laughs> next up. Hey, Bill. How are you? Hey, Bill. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey. All right, Bill. I know where you're from, but tell everybody else. I am from uh, West Florida, so just north of just northwest of Tampa, actually Tarpon Springs. Okay. What so, you got going on this week? Oh, I got I got cool stuff, but I got to start with uh, a thank you. So I, I've shared my screen. If you want to put it up, uh, yeah. But you'll see me in a non-green shirt, which nobody ever gets. Whoa. Yeah, I know, right? So there's a reason I'm sharing this, and Lamora, this is just for you guys and and Phil. You guys, we need to thank you guys for giving the example you are, right? So it's not just you have a good company. And I'm not just kissing up here, okay? I'm dead serious about this. I can't send you any free stuff right now. I know. <laughs> so so um, it is not, um, it's not just that you're running a good company with no debt and no venture backers and stuff, right? But um, you're telling people, you're reminding people, we're paying our employees. We're, we're making sure everybody's okay. And you're showing examples like this show. So the show we're on right now inspired what you're looking on here, which looks like a frozen video, right? Yeah. So that's actually a presentation that I did yesterday. So the woman on the right is Tara Rail. Sorry, I butcher her name all the time. She actually is an expert on doing speech pathology remotely. And I was able to bring up StreamYard, do exactly what we're doing right here, interview her for about 25 minutes, and all of our customers at LessonPix were able to learn how to do this remotely. And it didn't cost them anything and they're sitting at home and i wouldn't have known about how to do this if i hadn't been on your show and tell so thank you um and um on friday i don't know if you guys remember this little girl uh ella uh, engineering ella but her family her mom is going to be on the same kind of show on friday explaining how they've managed over eight years to never spread a respiratory disease Sorry. among anybody in their family yep. by doing all the things we're supposed to be doing now, they've been doing it for eight years because if Ella gets this, Ella's one of those, it's only for the in, you know people in danger. Well, she's one of those, right? Yeah. So they've been doing this for years. And on Friday, we're going to actually do an interview where they walk through their house and they go through all the protocols they do in order to keep her safe. So let's start with the important stuff. And thank you for, for doing this. Well, thank um, you so much, Bill. Yeah. And um, so from there, let's do something fun. Yeah. Uh, I have a problematic picture. Um, that is me at my absolute most stressed. And anybody who knows a boat and owns a boat knows that <laughs> is not a good picture. That yeah, is not a good friend, angle. Your boat's not to be, ever supposed to be at that angle. Our friend, their boat caught on fire and then sank. Like these are the things that can happen with a boat. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. So, so I got home one night after a storm rolled through and this is what I found on my dock. And mm -hmm. I one of the questions was what the hell happened? Uh, so, so step one was fix it, right? So we got it down and everything's okay. The boat's fine. We're all good. Um, I went and looked at what happened because this is what happened on February the 6th. So this is, let me zoom in a little so you guys can see. So yeah. this is the tide monitor at the beach, at Clearwater Beach um, that day. The wind was blowing from the west all day, which is why we're about two feet above normal all day. And then right here at about 1040, there's a two foot spike over a seven minute period, which is insane. The amount of water moving through the canal must have been insane, but it literally lifted my boat up, which floated it off the, off the lift and it floated backwards and it was thankfully tied. So it didn't float away. 
Um, but when it came back down, it was tilted the way it was. And I kind of freaked out. And I said, you know what? I can solve this. What I would like is I would like my own tide meter that mm -hmm. when when this happens, I would like to notice, that, hey, Bill, check the boat, right? So I noticed that on my dock, I have a ramp. And if I can use a little bit of high school trig, right? A little bit of high school trig, I can measure the angle of this ramp and I can know how high the tide is, which is mm -hmm. awesome, right? All I have to do for that is I need an accelerometer and maybe some circuit python. Right. So I did. I did it and it all works. And a lot of your team helped me. So they, they didn't help me on the anything other than the power. But the power was such a nightmare. Um, this is all you need from the hardware side. You need a, uh, a feather uh, blue fruit sense, which is the one on the bottom, which is basically your NRI 52840 plus a bunch of sensors, one of which happens to be an accelerometer. And then on the top, it's an airlift uh, from you guys that uh, puts this on my Wi-Fi network. This is all you need is this and a power supply. And the problem is uh, we're on a dock and we want a power supply. So I also picked up a solar panel, mm. a charger, and a battery. This is your picture. It happens to be exactly what I bought. I picked up a waterproof box because I don't trust myself to make a waterproof proof box. I stuck everything in it. I painted it white later because it was too hot. I 3D printed some mounts that let me mount the solar panel onto the box. That's what it looks like when it's done. And that's it mounted on the dock before I spray painted it white and dropped eight degrees off of the temperature. So that's it in use. It took me, I don't know, it probably took me five hours for the electronics and maybe another five hours for power. Because power is the problem, right? Power, power is tough. It's if you're not plugged in, it gets yeah. real hard real fast. And it did. It got real hard real fast. I'm not thrilled with where I am, but it is working. And let me show you. Yeah, for Ooh. Again. Hey, look at this. So we'll make it live. So here's my live dashboard. Oh, whoa. All right. This is all you. This is great. So here's here's my tide data. Uh, it also shows me whether or not it's charging. Uh, it shows yeah. me the temperature inside of the box. Here's the tides over the past week. Uh, that right there is where I took it off to fix something and paint the box white. Um, and I'll have to try and clean that up. Here, I also put a couple of voltage dividers on the battery. So not only can I tell the voltage coming in, I can also tell the voltage of the battery because this changes with the way the charger works. So I can track it. And if I look back, I can see that it charges during the day and it you know goes down over the night. And I'm not going to die, which is wonderful at the moment. Yeah. It also tracks barometric pressure and humidity, which I think are useless inside of that box. Um, and then uh, th this is actually the, r the raw ramp angle. So I've got all this being tracked. It's awesome. I've got it hooked up with if this, then that. It texts me. It's not everything that I want because what I really want to do is actually um, this. So this chart shows my graph so the green is my tide the red is the tide at clearwater beach and the gray is the projected tide so we've all been high because we have a west wind all week but um i want to be able to predict my own tides that's what i want um it is hard you got to do a lot of discrete foyer transforms and you got to calculate mm -hmm. a bunch of coefficients but it's a solved problem and all i need now is data and now i can get my data and this is awesome I'm just so happy this is not a chart of the stock market. No, it feels like it, but it's yeah, not. You, it really is. I'm just so happy that this is not that. Bill, yeah. thank you. This is awesome. You not only took our hardware and did cool stuff with it, but you're using Adafruit IO. And thank you so much for sharing um, what you've been up to and um, just all the work that you you do. For the folks that are just tuning in the first time that uh, you hear Bill, um, please check out atmakers.org. Yeah, this is, with. I think, one of the first non AT projects I've ever shared, but this is one of the. This is a great thing. Well, you know what? You learned a lot about power. I'll, I'll give you a hint. If you want the humidity and pressure to mm -hmm. work out, um, drill a hole in the box and then cover it with Teflon tape and then attach that because Teflon lets um, air particles through, but it will not let water particles. Water. Through. Excellent. I'm scared to death of salt water. If you guys don't know, it's evil. No, I mean, it is. I, I was measuring to check this thing to make sure it was accurate. I was measuring the depths one day, and the next day, the tape measure shot. 
Saltwater is insanely evil. So. In that, that movie and active and wet. Yeah, that, that movie Alien Nation, and then later the TV show that melts those aliens. You have to watch out for them. They were, <laughs> they were terrified of saltwater. All right. Well, I haven't seen it, but maybe yeah. he's an alien. I don't it's know. Called alien Nation. He is always wearing green. First of all, these aliens came down, and they then they started to live together in uh, L.A. One was a cop. It was a buddy cop series with an alien. Right. I'm not making this up. Uh, well, now what, I, now I have something time. to stream, so I'm yeah. Good. You have plenty of time for this. <laughs> All right, thanks, Bill. Thank you so much, Bill. Bye, guys. Bye next week. All right. All right, next up. Old Crow. Old Crow, welcome back. What you got going on? Hey, guys. It's uh, been a while. I've been busy until now because our company has shut down, much like everyone else's. Yep. Which gives me the time to actually do some of my stuff again. Synth time. So <laughs> one of the first things that's been on my back burner for a while is this is my proposed front panel for my Kroby X synthesizer. Everybody's been bugging me for one that uh, you can actually use without needing tweezers to adjust the controls. So, you know, this is going to be a uh, like 18 inch wide by six inch tall uh, control panel. It mounts, it's meant to mount behind what we call a 19 inch rack mount uh, plate and chassis. You've probably seen those from, on anything from a, from a um, ethernet hub to a, you know, a mixer to all kinds of telco equipment. Anyway, yeah, I, uh, the, um, my eight voice Crow BX is built into a uh, chassis box and it needed a, a front panel done. Uh, this will be the circuit board. I just got started on it because placing all the controls itself takes a while. Um, but I'll be using uh, uh, several uh, items that end up being uh, circuit Python um, uh, manipulated. It's going to read the positions of these pots. It's going to, I've added a few things like uh, I have individual voice controls, which the original machine never had. You can turn off one through all eight voices and set their, their individual respective um, position in the stereo uh, stage. But uh, just got started on that, but con uh, continuing on the Circuit Python kick, I've been making these little boards for uh, the Pi. Uh, I don't like the way you work with the uh, parallel I/O structure of the Pi. It's memory mapped, which is great, but you cannot set and reset bits at the same time. You have to use one instruction to set bits and one instruction to reset them. Like, like, well, for the stuff I do, I like changing things concurrently, so we just throw a 23017 on here, and it's easily fast enough to do what I want. This particular board is meant to interface to a piece of legacy hardware over at, at work that operates um, triax or transistors so you can turn on and off lighting effects in a fixture or in an exhibit. Uh, and it works really good. Uh, one that I've yet to put together, this is a little uh, four-channel AD board, but I'm putting a Pi inside one of our 277-volt uh, power panels because the, the building runs a fair bit of its uh, lighting on 277 volts. We're converting everything over to LEDs, and I'm, I needed a way to keep track of the current going through any particular branch because I don't want it to go over 4,000 watts of power drawn on any single branch. Um, more on that when I am finished with it. But um, the third circuit I can't show you because it's on my uh, CAD system at work. It's not here. I forgot to bring it home. But it's a 24-channel uh, DAC that plugs into the Pi and gives me 24 channels of 0 to 10 volt uh, DC control voltage. These are for LED power supplies that have an input so you can turn the power supply, turn the dimming of the LEDs from zero to 100%. And our showroom, we're wanting to zone control it. We have uh, 12 um, LED beams is what I call them. They're six meters long and they have, uh, each one of them has uh, about 800 watts of LEDs in them. And uh, we want to do nice things like light where the conference room table is, but make it dark over where the TV comes up out of the, the accordion counter so that it's not got glare on the screen and whatnot. It's all going to be remote operated either from a phone app or from a little uh, touch screen on top of a box that, that plugs into the Pi. When it's all working and running, I'll make a short film. And, uh, yeah. Bring it back. yeah, come by. Come by. 
And thank you for stopping by the show and tell. It's good to see you back. We're going to be doing this every week for an hour. So you got plenty of time and plenty of places to show your projects. Yep, yep. I'll get going here. And before anybody asks, I'm in Chicago. All right. So. All, right. Beat me. All right, Chicago in the house. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, next Emily up. and Mike. Hey, Emily and Mike. Where, Hi, Emily. where are you and what project do you have this we week? We're in Maryland near uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. And our project, Emily, you want to talk about projects? Hey, Emily. Your eyes are so big, Emily. <laughs> You're so excited. How you doing? How you doing? Gum. Yeah, okay, right, gum. Good. You All got right. gum? So oh, you're coming soon because Emily wanted to make a holder for her phone that goes on the back of the car headset. So we made a first prototype to check that we got our measurements correct for Ooh. interacting with the headset. Okay. And then we have prototype number two. Put your phone on it. Okay. Oh, um, man. That's cool. We only did an 80 degree tilt, which was not enough, but we actually put it in the car. So we're going to have to do another take, another uh, another round. So maybe next week. We'll okay. Have try, break. try again. This is what prototyping is all about, Emily. I have to sometimes do things eight times in a row until I get it right, but that's how it goes. And then. You feel so good when you're done. So what did you say? Oh, you're supposed to say something else. Oh. <laughs> you're supposed to say it's not ready, don't ask. All right, it's not ready, That's right. Well, you know, for the folks that are on, we normally send out stickers. We won't be doing this week, but don't worry. I'm remembering all the folks, and we'll get you stickers again. Got a few. Okay. Yeah, collect them all. Four. That's good. Right. You need five. That's we'll right. Get you fifth when one. you get the fifth one, you get a free yogurt. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so right, much. Thanks, Emily. Bye, Emily. Bye, goodbye. Okay, next up, Jay. Hey, Dylan. Hey, hey, good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. you sound great. Where are you? I'm uh, coming from uh, rainy San Diego today. So, okay. Uh, um, it's been a little while, and I've been making a lot of projects recently, so I'm going to power through some of the stuff that's already kind of documented already. Yeah, go, go, go. A lot of these are in our newsletters and more. Thank you so much for tagging us and You've been on a tear. These have been great. Yeah, thank you. So this one, I did a YouTube video about it. Um, I did an article about it. Um, really, all it is is a is a modular enclosure for Raspberry Pis. Um, but you really could put anything into it. And um, big big shout out to uh, Noah and Pedro. I saw their stuff a while back on using threaded inserts. I had been doing pressure fits for all my screws till I saw some of their stuff. Um, I don't have the rig that they did. I'm still kind of doing it by hand, kind of cowboy style. But um, I'm in love with uh, with uh, threaded inserts and melting those into the plastic. So cool. this this project basically um, is a whole bunch of those. So it's basically a front and a back and a top and a bottom and, a, and the sides. Uh, but I made them with uh, um, a consistent screw pattern so I can add and remove things. Um, I, I've been using this touch screen a lot um, in a lot of projects, and I'm kind of frankly a little bit tired of it because <laughs> it's uh, it's really low res. It's really easy to work with. I have a bunch of models already. It's really easy for me to throw something together with this, but it's really low res. Um, and I'll get to some of that here in a second. But one thing I heard from people again and again was um, they want to print this on smaller printers. So one of the things that I've printed out is... Uh, um, a lot of pieces I've split in half and joined with little biscuits and things like that. Mm. Um, so that's, I, I didn't do an article about that. I've, I've literally got a box of these. I might put something together on that. Um, while I'm giving shout outs to people, I want to give a shout out to the, uh, the Adafruit Discord channel, which helped me with all of the CircuitPython stuff on this Clue project that I did. And this is the, uh, the the clue finder, which you basically uh, hard code in uh, GPS coordinates, or you enter them in with this little, <laughs> a little difficult to use interface, um, and it will tell you the heading and the distance to get back to that uh, those coordinates. And no soldering. Um, it uses the GPS uh, sensor. Um, it uses the Adafruit clue and a battery and a stem cable, um, and the. Plastic, I think, is like less than 20 grams of plastic. So it's a real short print, too. Yeah. No, no supports. Um, and then thank you, of course, John Park, 
um, traded me. Um, I was I was complaining and w- frankly probably whining a little bit that I had a green one and I wanted to have all black electronics uh, <laughs> to keep on theme. So he traded me. Um, but uh, but yeah, this little this little guy's working great. He's not going to stay together for very long though because I'm going to make some other projects out of this stuff. All right, cool. um, we'll so see. so in flight stuff that I have. Um, you know, I love taking and building cyber decks and I want to give a shout out. There's a whole cyber deck discord channel. It's great. There's like 20 or 30 people making all different kinds. Um, there's a, there's a cyber deck subreddit, which is pretty good, but the discord channel is really great. And, and hopefully we've got some of those folks on, um, tonight, but I am making, and I almost never show one that's in progress. I only like to show them when they're done. All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna, this is going to be good. Ooh, this is a treat. So here's a black one. So I've done a brown one and I've done a gray one. So this is the black one. Um, and one of the fun things is I'm learning how to make stuff out of fewer and fewer parts. So this will hold the screen on one side. It'll hold a bunch of different kinds of compute, including Raspberry Pi. You can see it doesn't have the threaded inserts in it yet. Uh, this one doesn't, uh, but it snaps right in. And these Pelican cases are great for that, that these parts just literally just kind of snap right in. Um, the cool thing I'm playing around with now that I've got a little bit of time at home is this is carbon fiber filament. And it's like super rigid and strong mm-hmm. for how thin this part is. So it's expensive, but the other cool thing, and for those of you looking, it prints matte black. And I mm-hmm. love the fact that it's matte. So right. aside from the whole carbon fiber thing, uh, it's the, the matte black is something I'm a fan of. And the keyboard for my last ones was a plaid keyboard. They're hard to assemble. They're really hard to find. I'm using a uh, another one, an OLKB keyboard. Um, this has more rows so that people can actually get, uh, they don't have to do crazy uh, minimalist keyboards. And this is one again, where I've done it multi-part um, and it's all flat parts, no supports. Cause I think somebody was mentioning in the discord channel earlier, how they hate supports. I despise support. So anytime I can print flat, I will. Um, so f- finally, f- that's, that's kind of the shell piece in parallel. I'm making one that a project where the guts can either go in uh, this Pelican case or in this format. And this is where I'm playing around with this. And this is what I've got so far. This is one of the uh, Udo bolts, which is like an AMD. This is, it, it's, it's loud, it uses a ton of power, but this is running off of USB-C. And mm-hmm. again, this is a case that I've made here in the last couple of days, just kind of throwing this together. And again, all carbon fiber. Um, so it's coming out nice and matte black, but this is actually running uh, Windows 10 I, I loaded up Steam on it. You can play games on it too. It's like <laughs> Windows games. So this is, uh, the, you know, this is gonna be fun kind of dealing with the thermals of putting that in a Pelican case. So we'll figure that out. But uh, this is all the, the kind of stuff that I'm working on. And hopefully, like I said, we're lucky. If we're lucky, we've got some other folks from the, uh, from the Cyberdeck Discord. Cause cool. I know other people, I know folks on Twitter are taking and modifying this. They've made a couple of these. I know people are making the uh, the Pelican case ones too, so I'm eager to see what people make. All right, thank Agree. you so much, Jay, and please come Thanks. back and show all your creations. Will do. Thanks. Okay, we have to get through. Everybody. Yeah, we're gonna do speed, speed round, round, and everyone's gonna just do it in a minute, and we're gonna get to absolutely everyone. Okay, Drew and Helen, show what you got. Oh, Helen. Oh. Hello. Hi. Uh, can Hi. you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, so, uh, I, this is the Open I Harbor Summit badge that I been playing around here. Um, and then meanwhile, Helen's been actually streaming on Twitch this evening, soldering. Um, so she, she has a Twitch going on where she's soldering together one evil mad scientist. Uh, oh, good. Five, 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 five kids. Please oh, put your yeah. Twitch channel in the Discord so people yeah. subscribe. Show them your uh, board. Here so this is. is the... Uh, so this is a, this is a Surface, sorry, hi. <laughs> this is a Surface Mount um, 555 board made of discrete components um, and I've been soldering it together um, today um, which has been especially hard because this is the first time I've soldered using lead free solder I left my leaded solder behind in London the last time I taught and yeah. by the way where um, are you where in the world are you right now uh, we are in Berlin okay we're in Berlin, Berlin Germany so we're in Berlin, Berlin. In yeah. Berlin, Germany 
Um, yeah, so I left my solder behind, my leaded solder behind, and you can't buy it in stores here, leather solder in Germany. Well. Um, it's verboten. So I'm having to use leaded solder, and um, it's been kind of a frustrating experience. But by the end of the board, I have gotten better at using it. And it was one of my um, ambitions for this year, actually, was to make the switch to lead-free solder. You know, Greg Davil does it, Benny Huang does it, I should... I should move to that free solder is safer. So. No better okay. and, uh, real quick here, uh, my my further adventures with flexible circuits. So I don't know if you can see here in the screen that I'm sharing. Yeah. Um, so this was a version that we made for the Open Harbor Summit. You can see that that resistor, well, that resistor actually popped off. So um, made a new a new version where I put it on the um, back side. So we have it on the front side is the LED and on the back side is the resistor. And then thanks to a newel for oh, giving yeah. me the idea of having a cutout here. So then the side is draped down and the uh, part with the components uh, stays flat. So I thought that was a really cool That's idea. Really cool idea. Um, so I, I'm experimenting with that as well. So more adventures in flux. Thank you. All right, all well, right. thank you, Jernel and Drew. I just wanna say thank you for doing all the things you did with Open Hardware Summit as it transformed into a virtual event. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. That helped a lot of people come together uh, last week. Yes, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Okay, all right, we're gonna go to Aaron. Speed round. Speed round. Um, so I just uh, finished, uh, all the events in San Francisco here or San Francisco Bay Area are canceled. So I'm staying home and just working on costumes this week and I just launched this tutorial on uh, my, Super cool staff. Uh, so inside is a Metro M4 and um, a prop maker wing. So it has a lot of different sensors in there and everything. I'm really digging it. It looks like it looks like it's on fire, which makes me super happy. Um, right. but then it's got different uh, modes with uh, with with motion. So I've got the Xena Warrior Princess yell, um, or if I go side to side, I have an animation with a with a the little bamboo switch sound and then there's a let's see if i can get it to work uh there's a couple of other ones too um it's pretty fun it's made from uh expanding foam and uh and just leds inside and i'm just i'm pretty delighted with it having a great time um mm -hmm. i just launched the tutorial for that this week so take a look for it on the learning system and yep. uh, it's kind of a fun project to do it at home just with your with your hardware store stuff so nicely done Aaron. Yay! Okay. And where are you dialing in from? Uh, I'm actually in the in the foothills in Northern California. So okay, all right. Hi, thanks, Aaron. Okay, we're going to continue speed round. Speed Next round. up, Deshi Pu, welcome. And Hello. where where are you uh, dialing in from? I'm uh, in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. Okay, Europe. So yeah, uh, I wanted to show you something I've been working for several years now. That's uh, Pew Pew. Yep, and. Uh, the problem it solves I, that I had is that I, I was running uh, Python game programming uh, workshops. And, uh, you know, you always waste half of the workshop uh, dealing with installing stuff on the yeah. people's computers. Download the uh, ID. <laughs> yeah, uh, generally. So I, I thought if, if we had some device that could be used to, you know, uh, you just plug it in and uh, program it with Python, and, and it lets you make simple games, uh, like uh, games that you can make in one hour. That would be great. So uh, about that time, CircuitPython uh, started to really grow, so I used that. And I uh, initially, I made this uh, wing for, for the uh, Adafruit uh, board. So I started with that. Yeah. And uh, later on, uh, but turns out that this was a bit expensive for workshops. So I, uh, at some point uh, when I was happy with how it worked, I, I made this version uh, that has everything built in. It doesn't use a Adafruit board. I just stole the schematic from, from, from it. It's not stealing. Uh, removed everything, absolutely <laughs> everything that wasn't necessary. Uh, there are a couple of hacks in here uh, as well. So, and, and got it down to the $10 a piece. So it's, uh, and I, there are a lot of people actually using this for various workshops. We have a version we used for EuroPython. Yeah. All the participants uh, got one. Huge. This was uh, 1400 <laughs> uh, 
devices. Yeah. Right? That's either a big board or a small deshi poo. I can't decide that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, most recently, I made uh, a version with a display, which is basically the same as the Pi Batch, except it ha also has everything that is not necessarily removed from it. That's so cool. it's just an uh, SMD51 and uh, a small piece of speaker and a display. And that's it. And and the buttons for. for all right. Just if you link all this up in Discord, yeah. thank you so much for showing it. And also a personal thanks. Thanks for being part of the CircuitPython community. You've been part of it a long time and you've been doing it. Thanks for running that community. This is really great. All right. Yay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next up, we're going to go to Timon. Tim, how's it Hi. going? All right, speed round it, show small things very big. Um, yeah, I guess I'm now show this first because that is connected to my screen. Um, I made this little dimmer of recent weeks um, for my kitchen sink. And uh, I had like an LED strip. And it's just like two knobs to um, dim between like warm and cold white. And it runs an Adafruit Feather. It's a little hacked up and has a mill PCB that I did on my other mill. And um, when I did some modification to that, I accidentally um, shorted one of the GPIO pins um, to 24 by volts, which completely fried my Adafruit feather, um, unfortunately. And uh, I had to actually reflow that and switch out the MCU. Oh. And uh, now it's buffering. Buffering, buffering, buffering. OK. I mean, you can watch that on my Twitter if you want to yeah. see that. I had to switch out the SAMD21 and uh, yeah, look at that. It's Ooh. alive again and works again. And Yay! Uh, touch enabled. Good work. Right. All right, and... so you heard two things. 24 volts not good for my controllers and how to replace my controller. Congratulations. <laughs> and another thing I did this year, I guess, it's not super new. Um, if you know, um, the U, uh, Jan Henrik made this uh, replacement PCB for the TS100. Um, uh, not the, not the USB wire iron, but the one with the barrel jack. And he made a, re a replacement that uses USB-C power delivery, and it fits in the same case. But I thought it would be nice to have like a fully open source version of that, so you can print your own case for this and just use the tips from the TS100. So I designed this case for it and oh, yeah. uh, pulled that out. And this just fits over here. Eh. Okay. Still broke up. We're going to keep moving. That yeah, was great. Sorry. No, all good. Come That's back next week. We're going to do this for another hour next week. Also, right, thanks, I, we're big fans of your account and stuff, so it's nice to see you. Yeah, you. good yeah. stuff. All right, next up, Lenore. Hey, Lenore. Hi, thanks how's it going? Time. Thanks for waiting. Yeah. So um, I was you? To, I'm in California. I'm in Sunnyvale, California. And I was supposed to be in New York this past weekend for the Open Hardware Summit, which didn't get to go to in person, but got to go virtually. But I was going to bring a couple of things that were um, pertinent to the panel I was on, which was the uh, history panel. So I've got some of our old badges that we got to help make for the Open Hardware Summits of the past. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Here's Mundell. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I even found uh, one that uh, Wyalum made. Yeah. Uh, those old ones. So those are fun. And I found our prototype of the Lego badges when we were figuring out what we were going to do before we found all the sourcing, sourced all the green ones. And then, of course, the most important thing I brought to show and tell. Uh, is it a cat? It would be yes. the cat. Yes. Thank you for doing it. Finally. Hi. Is that Zener? This is Zener. Hi, Zener. All right, that's fair. Good work. <laughs> He's like, why am I in a bin? Why are right. we're stored? just going to do this for the next hour. I think it could be an anti-static bin. I got to tell you. Yeah. So yeah, move it's that. Got, it's got a sweatshirt in there for her. It's cozy. She loves it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. And fellow Shuttered Company at the moment, um, Sheltered Shuttered Company. Um, we are all waiting. Is there places where people can get your stuff if they want to order it and it doesn't ship from you right now? Or Well, so we are um, shipping a little bit. Uh, so because Ooh. we get to come in here to take care of Zener, we can come in and grab stuff and ship it uh, from home. Wow. Uh, so we're doing work from home. It's just me and Wendell now. So we're a little bit slower than usual. It's just us. Yeah. All our employees are sheltering uh, at home. So okay. 
Um, you can buy from us, and uh, a few of our other resellers may still have stock, like Robot Shop, um, Micro Center, okay. etc. So keep All on right. making. In it together. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go really, really fast. If everyone can do it, we can get everyone in. Turns out we need more than an hour. Okay, Liam, go, go, go. Hey, hey. So can you see my screen? Yep. You got 30 Here's seconds. A really cool tool that, uh, that we've built and that everyone can try. It's an augmented reality tool for circuit boards. So basically any net component or layer you can overlay on the board in real time. Uh, we'll go and pull part information from DigiKey. Uh, we'll save you from having to count up pins because we'll highlight them as you roll over. Ooh, and then if you nice. need more information, you can right click and create the net. Ooh. So it's everything you ever need to work on a board. There's a ton of advanced features that I couldn't uh, bother to show you, but it runs on uh, Android, iOS, Mac, and uh, Windows. So uh, anyone can try it. And I think it'd be really cool to see people show off some of their uh, open source projects on here. Yeah, I got to debug a board this back, week. So come back next it. week, and we'll slot you in in the beginning so you can do a little bit more of a demo if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. I'd love okay, to do it. Okay, thank you. Hey, Liam. Thanks right. so much. Thanks, Liam. Cool. We're going to keep going. Techniac, go fast. Hey, I'll be uh, real quick. Yeah. So I'm here to talk about our first tech challenge robot this year. I just sent the link in uh, both the Discord and the uh, stream link because I am unable to share my screen for some reason. But basically, the challenge this year is we had these big, uh, like, one foot by half foot uh, Duplo blocks that the robot had to autonomously pick up, uh, drive around, stack, uh, make towers out of all at the same time while avoiding three other robots uh, through teleoperated and autonomous code. Um, you can check out all of our work on our website, mmkrobotics.com. Uh, we have an amazing documentation team who has been working super hard to keep all that uh, up to date. And yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Right, we're gonna keep moving. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, anytime. All right, next up. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. Uh, I am based in Ireland, and I just want to show you a project that I was working on at the weekend. I'm also working from home now for the foreseeable future. So it's a NeoPixel strip with uh, Feather Huzzah, and uh, it has a web page just for changing it. Uh, oh, there you go. It. Green. And uh, it's magnetic. Uh, so I took the magnet out of a, an old hard drive, and you can attach it to a door. And you can tell oh. people if you're, a, you know, don't want to be disturbed or if you're, oh, if you're in a meeting or something. Yeah, yeah. That's it's right. a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's it. All right. Inspect AR was also in Canada, by the way. And, and Tim can say where he was. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. That all's gone. All right. Orlando, give us the elevator pitch. You we can't hear you. are on mute, so you want to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Give us the 30 second I started, pitch. I started teaching, teaching a couple workshops about electronics um, to undergraduate students. Uh, so one of them was about designing a smartwatch. Um, one of them was intro to electronics, so learning how to do Eagle. And another one was biomedical instrumentation. Uh, so it's learning how to do Eagle um, uh, biomedical instrumentation, basically doing heart rate monitors, electrocardiograms, and things like that. Uh, so during the whole stoppage, not stoppage of work, but whole work from home deal, I started working another aspect of the smartwatch, uh, which has been uh, MP3, because someone wanted to actually play MP3s um, from the watch, which I think is pretty cool, something I want to do as well. So I basically was able to borrow from your MP3 shield as, as well as spark funds as well to sort of put something together. It's rather mm -hmm. large. So I need to shrink it somehow to fit in a smart watch. Uh, but the workshop's been pretty cool. They had to be canceled, obviously, due to the uh, you know the current pandemic. Uh, yep. But it's sort of what I've been doing in my free time as of late. All right. Come by next week. You always have good stuff. And thank you for teaching and sharing. Yep. We need more people to make pulse oximeters. We do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Orlando. So we're going to now go to uh, Mohib. Mohib, hello. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, uh, keep it 30 seconds. We'll get everyone in. Then we're really, really going to go. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick. All right. Can you all see? Yep. Cool. So I made this VR telepresence robot, uh, and it's all streaming live through WebRTC. So this is exploring my room right now. Uh, I used a uh, dual synchronous lens camera I found online for like 80 bucks, which I thought was really cool. But just when you plug it in, it shows up as one feed of two lenses. And so I've been working on this telepresence robotics platform uh, for guides I'm putting out for Amazon uh, Web Services for serverless. 
So uh, this will be published hopefully soon. Uh, it's just like an install script to put uh, this Python uh, script onto the Raspberry Pi with all the necessary libraries for either the Adafruit Motor Hat or for the um, uh, Pi Maroni Explorer Hat, because I originally built this on top of the STS Pi robot kit. Uh, and then it calls this uh, just streamer application, so you can come to this app. And so this is a web app, uh, sample web app I'm also putting out that lets you log in and control and stream the robot. Oh, yeah. And uh, so when I do full screen uh, with this button on my uh, Oculus Go headset, I was able to experience myself in VR, which was really weird. Uh, so if you have any form of body dysmorphia, it's just like oh, it messes with your perspective, but in a good way, I think. So this is the uh, camera on it, and this is the body of the robot. So it's just this tank drive kit, a solar battery, and a Raspberry Pi with the Adafruit motor. Right now, right, um, if you remember, email me or tag us on uh, Twitter or whatever, and I'll put this in the Python on hardware newsletter because it's Python on hardware. Awesome. Cool. All right, thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye, bye. Okay, we're gonna uh, go to Paint Your Dragon, Phil B, do the thirty second thing, and then Colin, and then No and Pedro are gonna pay us, play us out. Okay, this looks exactly like what I showed two weeks ago, but it isn't. Uh, rather than a uh, Feather M4 board, it's now a Feather NRF52. Um, it, the, the pins are all different than the normal Feather, so it's all messy wiring for now, but eventually I think we'll have a Feather wing so you can do NRF52 to the LED matrix and have you know Bluetooth uh, the whole deal going. Also, Jeff Epler is working on a Circuit Python library. This is all in Arduino right now, but uh, Circuit Python library is coming along. So okay. that's what I got going. Thank you, Phil B. I Thanks. stopped asking people where they're from. We're all part of one Earth now, so we're all here. Next all time, right. Colin, <laughs> Colin, show us what you got, and then we're gonna have no one page place out. Then we're gonna do ask an engineer. Lot to do, lot to do. Let's do more. How about to do more? We have an activity generator. If you need an idea for something to fill your time. Made on Clue, can you read that? It's a shame, I don't think you can read that. Yeah, I can read that. Button. And it says, make a painting about noise. Well, that's kind of you know simple, so we can add another variable onto it. And now it says, make a painting about noise time. That's more interesting. Might even make a song about that. Hit the button again, it'll randomly bring up another activity. Make a drawing about singing and running. Yeah. Okay. And it goes on and on. I have always liked this sort of creative seed idea. I started a website years ago called Song Fight that was based on this. And uh, now I have it in a pocket form. All right, well, go sing and go run. I'm I got a lot to do here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Colin. Come to right. you from Brooklyn. No, Pedro, please play us out. This is the anthem. I think I got it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. This was one hour and seven minutes of show and tell around the world. If it was you the most show were not on the show and tell, no problem. Next it's week. Next week Same Wednesday, thing. 7 p.m. We're going to keep doing hour. this. Bye, everybody. Ask an engineer starts in one minute. Hi, folks. Bye.